All right, math 20-2, mathematical reasoning lesson number five practice test. Again, these videos are for study purposes only. I try my best to minimize my mistakes, but they will happen. I try and show, I try to show and explain most of my steps. These videos might be long, but hopefully they'll be helpful. All right, one, a conclusion which is arrived by inductive reasoning is called a, a definition question is called conjecture. If you don't know it, you don't know it. Uh, Georgina is working with Pascal triangle, the first five rows. So we have row one, two, three, four, five. All right, shown. She add together numbers in each row of the triangle and make a conjuncture. A conjuncture that could be made. So one is equal to a one, two is equal to two, three is equal to four, four is equal to eight, five is equal to 16. So one, this is two to the power of zero, two to the power of one, two to the power of two, two to the power of three, two to the power of four. So every time when I, when I am at row n, the sum seem to be at two to the power of n minus one, because if you look at the uh, exponent, it is always one less than my row number. So two to the power of n minus one, two is b. Use the following information to answer the next three questions. Okay, here's a sequence. If this sequence continues in pattern, then what will be the next number? Okay, so let's take a look at what the pattern is. So this is plus three, plus four, plus five. Oh wait, I can't do math. Plus three, plus two, plus five, plus seven, plus 12, and then this is a uh, plus 19. So it looks like every time it's added by the number uh, right in front of it. So every two numbers, it is added by a number in front. So the next number should be plus 31 and the under after that should be plus 50. Okay, so what would the pattern be? 50 plus 31 is equal to 81. Okay. Medjugorje believes she sees a pattern where sequence for determining numbers will be prime. Seeing that there are three primes, okay, two, five, seven, followed one by one composite, then two primes. Okay, I'm gonna change the color. Three primes, one conjugate, two primes, two conjugate. She makes a conjuncture that sequence will continue with three prime followed by three composites before another prime number. The number which provides a counterexample to this conjuncture is. So 80, 81 is a conjugate. So the next one, this should be a prime and then conjugate, conjugate, conjugate. So C, 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 I'll make some space. So 81 plus 50 is equal to uh, 131. Uh, I think 131 is a prime. Uh, square root of 131 is equal to 11. So 131 divided by 11, oops, divided by 7. 131 divided by 5, divided by 3. Yeah, 131 is a prime. Uh, 81 plus 131. Oops, I mean uh, 81 so plus 30, wait, what the heck happened? Okay, so plus 19, plus 31, plus 50, so plus 81, 131 plus 81, oops. Uh, 212, which is obviously a composite, and then 212, So 50 plus 31 is 81, 81 plus, plus 81, 81 plus 31, uh, plus 50 plus 181, oh, sorry, plus 81, so the next one should be plus 131. Three forty-three. I believe this is divided by seven. Okay, so it works out. 
and then 343 plus 212, 555. Five, five. which is also composite. And then the next one will be uh, 555 five plus, or it's divisible by five, obviously. And then plus uh, 212, 767, seven, which should be a prime. Oh my god. All right, give me a sec. Let me figure out this sequence real quick. Uh, 767, is this a prime? Oh, we know like 131 is not one, 212 is not one, 341 is not one. So, uh, uh, let me pause this. Give me a sec. Oh, yeah, I fear I made a mistake. Uh, it should be five. 55, this is plus 212, and the next one should be a plus 343. Three. So 555 five, five plus 343 three is equal to uh, 898. And according to Mildred's conjuncture, P 898 should be a prime, which it definitely is not. So that's why I was confused because 898 was there, but it's not on the question. So because it is, it goes against their uh, their pattern. It is a counterexample. All right, two. Midred also divide each number by the sequence by the previous number. As she moves down the, to the list, she makes a conjuncture that this quotient approaches a single number to a nearest hundredth. This number also quotient approaches. So five divided by two. 2.5, and then let's try 81 divided by 50. 1.62, uh, 343 divided by 221, 1.61, 898, 898 divided by uh, 555. Okay, looks like 1.618, which is also the golden ratio. So the nearest one hundredth, so one point six two. Okay, consider the following statements. All clarinet players are music musicians. Fred is a clarinet player. Which the following is a conclusion that can be reached from the statement. A all clarinet players are named Fred. So it says Fred is a clarinet player, not Clarinet player is named Fred, so A is wrong. B, all musicians are clarinet players. So when you when you say a statement, the converse of the statement. So if the statement you assume to be, for it to be true, the converse does not have to be true. So all play clarinet players are musicians. That doesn't mean uh, all musicians are clarinet players. At least I think that's what converse is. Give me a sec to uh, figure it out. Uh, well, I was wrong. Converse is not part of the definition in this unit, but what I was, was said was all true. So all musicians are clarinet players. So again, uh, all clarinet players are musicians. Does not mean the opposite is true. So B is not necessarily true. C, Fred is a musician. This is true because Fred is a clarinet player and all clarinet players are musicians. So if F means uh, clarinet player, then uh, clarinet players are musicians, and that means Fred is a musician. So C is correct. Fred is not a musician. Uh, obviously, C and D cannot both be right, so C must be right. Uh, five, consider the following scenario. Michael was given two statements. All even numbers are composite. Two is an even number. He concluded to the statement that two must be a composite number. What was the error in this scenario? So two is an even number, this is correct. All even numbers are composite. This is false because two is even and it is also a prime. So because of this one statement, uh, this, uh, so yeah, so this first statement is false. Therefore, the, uh, the conclusion must also be false. So let's see, uh, all even number are composite is untrue. So five is A. Uh, next one, 
Mario is attempting to prove that the difference between an even number and an odd number is always odd. His work is as shown, let 2n represent the even number, let 2n minus 1 be the odd number, 2n minus 2n minus 1, which is 2n minus 2m minus 1, which is 1, which is odd. So uh, the first mistake is that line 3. So there are two mistakes, like, so these type of questions where it asks you for a mistake, typically they all, always have two mistakes, just to confuse you. So there are two mistakes, one in line three and one in line four. So when you remove the bracket, you have to distribute the negative signs. So this should equal to 2n minus 2m plus one. Okay, so this is minus one, which is false. And then 2n minus 2m, you should, it's not equal to zero. It is equal to 2n, uh, or sorry, two times n minus m. So we know n minus m must be a number and then multiply by two, it must be even. Even number plus one is always odd. That's why even number minus odd number is always odd. So uh, six, the one that's incorrect, the first one, the first error is C. Uh, seven, which of the following expressions does not represent a number divided by three where m and n are both natural numbers. So three times any number should be even. So this is correct, or so this is true. Uh, six times the number is, no, well, six is three times two. So basically three times the number, which is also true. Two m squared minus three n, I can take out a common factor of three. So four m squared minus n. So four minus squared minus n must be a number multiplied by three. It should always be a multiple of three. And then this one, uh, so we can take out a common factor of three for 12 of these terms. So three times five m plus one, and then minus n. So if n is a multiple of three, then it is multiple of three, or then it is the divisible by three, but we don't always know that n is a multiple of three. So a must be incorrect. Eight, which of the following would make an argument invalid? Uh, not enough premises, an error in the reasoning, too many premises, or no conclusion. So, I guess technically circular reasoning can be valid, but normally it's not. But then if you have an error in the reasoning, that is, uh, that is a big no-no. So B is probably better than D. So even if you, have a no con if you don't have a conclusion, you can still have an argument. So the problem in premises, it doesn't really matter as long as you have some premise. Okay, uh, Olivia showed her friend Alexander the failures proof. So failures on not true proof for two is equal to one. Okay, so where's the first error? So A is equal to B equal to C. So A plus B, so we added, so this is just A is equal to C, and then we, oops, A is equal to C, then we added B on both sides, okay? So nothing wrong with that. that. And then we multiplied both sides by uh, A, okay? Nothing wrong with there. We expand, and then we added both sides by A squared, so plus A squared, plus A squared, we get plus 2a squared and then the a squared. And then we subtracted ab. Okay, that's fine. Step six, I subtracted 2ac on both sides. Okay, that's fine too. Uh, step seven, uh, divide, no, common factor of 2a. Common factor of 2a on both sides or common factor of 2a on one side and a on the other, or actually common factor of a minus c, but same thing. Uh, okay, divide both sides by a minus c. This is a step that's wrong because a is equal to c, a minus c is gonna equal to zero, and you cannot divide both sides by zero. Step a is wrong. Step eight is wrong. Nine, which of the following is an error in the logic of the proof? So nine says error. Uh, 
A, B, C cannot all be equal to each other at the same time, so that's my assumption. I can assume that. Uh, dividing both sides at A minus C results in division by zero. This is true. Dividing both sides by A result dividing by zero. So it says A is equal to B equal to C. So A could be zero, but it's not specified. So it doesn't necessarily have to be wrong. And then D, the expression in step six cannot be factored. Uh, looks like it can. So that is also incorrect. Uh, okay, 10. Caitlin used inductive reasoning to make a conjuncture on the information shown. Her conjuncture was that the square of a number is always greater than the number. Greater than or equal to a number. So which one is the counterexample? It is one half. Why? Because one half squared is equal to one quarter. And we know that one half is actually greater than one quarter. So the square of a number is actually smaller than this original number. So 10 is going to be D. 11, use the following information. Well, 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 okay, Terrence noticed a pattern on developing numbers as shown. Three squared plus one is equal to 10. Five squared plus one is 26. Seven squared plus one is 50. Nine squared plus one is equal to 82. Okay, one more than the square of, so all these numbers are odd. Okay, so one more than the square of an odd number is a even number. So 11, C is the best answer. 12, Terence wants to prove the conjuncture using deductive reasoning. The first step should be, so odd number is always like 2n plus one or 2n minus one. In this case, they use 2n minus one, which is fine. Uh, represents the odd number and then consider so all number squared plus one all number squared plus one 12 is going to be a uh, for our turns look at the first three rows of the pattern and make a conjuncture that one more than the square of a prime number is an even number so what is a counter example well when you say prime number uh, the typical prime number counter example is always two because all the other cases, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, all the other prime numbers beside 2 is odd. So 2 is typically the uh, odd one odd. We're talking about uh, prime numbers. Okay, so 2 squared plus 1 is equal to 5, which is odd. It is not even, so the only counterexample is 2. 13, all of George's and Ava's sons have brown eyes and all of their daughters have blue eyes. They know from ultrasound their new baby will be a boy. Jordan and Ava conclude their son will have brown eyes. Which statement below is correct? Okay, so a baby can be both male and have blue eyes. Uh, just by walking outside, you can probably see some male people with blue eyes. So I will say the conclusion, it could be true, but it also might be false. So D and or B and D are first correct. What is this based on inductive or deductive reasoning? So uh, I think inductive, inductive is based on previous examples. So pre examples, might hold true, but the next one might not all, always necessary, necessarily be true. It is based on what you have observed. It is not an empirical proof. So 13 is B. Okay, next three questions. Two friends, Amy and Sunny, are playing a vacation, a variation of the game Nim, which there are, is one pile of pennies, and the player must remove one, two, or three pennies each turn. Player one, who takes first turn, the player who removed the last penny is a winner. The smallest number of coins Amy can leave Sunny to choose from and guarantee that Amy will win this. So the answer is four. Okay, so you just add up the smallest and the biggest thing you have to choose from. So one plus three is equal to four. So that if, uh, if if Sunny choose one, then Amy choose three, Amy wins. If Sunny choose two, Amy choose two, then Amy wins. 
if Sunny choose three, Amy choose one, and Sunny wins again. So the answer is four. The first game start with 12 coins. The second game start with 18 coins. Uh, Amy start both games. Which statement is correct? So we go back four, 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 or sorry, four add four is eight. Eight add four is 12. 12 add four is 16. 16 add four is equal to uh, 20. Okay, so that means if I, so after I withdraw a coin and it lands on one of these numbers, then I can always guarantee a win. Uh, if I cannot land on one of these numbers or I start on these numbers, I cannot guarantee a win. So if Amy starts with 12 coins, then Amy is not guaranteed to win the first game. As if Sunny can guarantee that she wins the first game. But if there are 18 coins, then Amy can withdraw two, and then uh, Sunny can, or and Amy can't guarantee to win the game. So Amy, so Sunny can guarantee she win the first game, and you can guarantee you win the second game. Uh, 14 is D. 15. Amy and Sunny changes the rule so that the player who takes the last penny is a loser, while still taking one, two, three pennies each turn. The play, they play four new games. Game A with four pennies, game B with five pennies, game C with uh, eight pennies, and game D with 10 pennies. So now, instead of taking the last one, we want to leave one, okay? So after I leave one, I just add four to it, so I get five. So that means if I have five, and then I just, whoever takes from five, I can just subtract, or I can take four, subtract by how many they take to guarantee they will always leave one because if you have one, you must take that penny and then you will always lose. So I can just keep adding four to it. Uh, five, nine, 13, 17. So if you don't start on one of these tiles, then you can guarantee a win. So four pennies, that is guarantee a win. So four is a win because it's not on one of these piles. Five is a lose. Eight is a win. 10 is also a win. So we have A, C, and D. 15 is C. Okay, the game of dots and boxes is play with two players on a grid of the size consisting of distinct dots. Players take turns connecting two of the dots in either a horizontal or vertical direction and a point is scored for each box uh, or square completed by a player. If player completes a box, they are obliged to make additional moves until they do not complete the box. The game ends when all possible lines are drawn and the winner is the player with the most boxes. Okay, two players, Betty and Clyde, are playing the game of dots and boxes and have arrived at a position where Betty has already earned two points. Okay, what is the smallest smallest number of points a person needs to win the game? So how many squares are there? There are nine total squares. That means if I have five squares, then I can win. It's Clyde's turn. Explain how he can win the game from this position. So I can just complete a square here, or I can complete a square here, and then I can just keep going until I win. Okay, so that, that's a score of seven to two, so Clyde wins. Uh, there we go, I just explained it. Explain why drawing the third line of a particular box will invite our opponent to score. So let's say if you have two lines, so we have minimize the uh, four dots there. So that means if you have two lines already drawn, if you draw the third line, then the opponent could always draw the last line to invite a score. So every time you complete a third line, the opponent will score and then they can move again. Okay, Betty and Clyde are a new game which reach a position shown. It's Betty turn. How many boxes can Betty complete on her turn? Uh, show how this can be done in a diagram. So 
we just take a look at each square box and then see how many uh, how many of them have three lines around it. So there's three lines around this box, so we can draw a line and that completes this box. And then this one also have three, so it can complete these two. So how many boxes? Two. The diagram shows Betty winning the two boxes and Clyde making the move shown by the thick line. Or and then making the line a thick line. Uh, now it's Clyde's turn. Complete the game in each player in each of the boxes. Uh, write the initial player who completed the box. You may use uh, different colors for each player's turn. So I'll, this is B. So if I'm Clyde, I'll complete this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and then here. And then B will draw this one. So who wins the game? Clyde. So if Clyde makes the best moves, uh, they will win the game. Betty realizes she could have made a better move here. Uh, now complete the game for both players. So what can Clyde do, right? Uh, Clyde cannot make any moves that will not guarantee Betty a score. So there are so every square already have two lines uh, crossed out. So Clyde cannot. So even if Clyde like move put a move around here, then Betty can just finish up the game, right? So Betty will win the game. All right, that's it for math 20-2, mathematical reasoning number lesson number five practice test. Hope you learned something. Goodbye.